folks. So yeah, thank you very much uh, for, the, for the introduction there. Um, Chris Stone, the Virtual Agile Coach. And uh, as anyone who's seen any of my work, and it'd probably be difficult for you not to have seen it because I put a lot of it out there. I am very much a believer and a passionate person when it comes to retrospectives, when it comes to people, uh, their interactions, their enjoyment of the workplace. I want to enable an environment where people can have fun in the workplace. And that all comes down to um, being a little bit creative. It comes down to trying new things. It comes down to um, just embracing microcultures. And some of these things we're going to talk on uh, throughout the, the session this evening. Uh, one of the reasons that I am the virtual coach is what I realized is that in my, my working life, everyone had been telling me, everyone, co-located teams is the best. Co-located teams is the golden way of doing things. And I thought long and hard about my, my career and the pandemic struck. And I thought, hang on, have I ever actually had that golden scenario of a co-located team? And I thought back really, really hard. I thought, actually, no, I've always had someone working offshore. I've always had some element of distributed working. So I thought, wow, I've got nine years of experience here that I can share with others. Why don't I share it loud and proud? So I began doing so. And when it comes to retrospectives, this is my favorite ceremony, if you want to call it that. It's that beautiful opportunity where a team can come together and say, hey, we don't give a fuck about what's happened. We want to learn what we can do better, differently, what we can try next. And that's where the, the genesis of me creating these different retrospectives came from, because the opportunity there is to do something different. And I was seeing all these retros out there and it was always sad, mad, glad, start, stop, continue, four L's, you know, and it just, it was very plain, it was very generic. And, and the consequence of it being very plain and generic, particularly in a remote environment, is exactly some of the challenges that you folks have mentioned this evening. People disconnect, they switch off. You know, it becomes easy to start reading a book or responding to a Slack message or doing something differently through little pigs. Yeah, there, there, are, there, there, there are there have been a number of attempts to, to liven up retrospectives and they have very much inspired me. Elvis was one that I saw. And I thought, great, there's an Elvis one. Let's do a queen one. Right. We've got the king of rock. We've got the king of retros in Elvis. Let's do the queen of retros. So I, I, that was one of my earlier ones. Now, for anyone who hasn't yet seen navigate your way into the zoom chat you will find a mirror link jump on there and i will take you folks through this bit of an adventure we're going to go on with miro today so it's very interactive it's very participative i will ask you regularly to speak with me and you may do so in whichever medium you prefer you can type in the zoom chat you can interact with the mirror board you can speak out loud however you prefer to interact with me you are welcome to do so in terms of an agenda for this workshop start with why i've kind of alluded to a little bit but that good old simon sinek quote why do engaging retrospectives we're going to learn a little bit about you i've just told you about me it's only fair if you share also we can then select a theme together and then we're going to create a new retro together a brand new one that hasn't existed before tonight which will then be owned by the north ants community and you folks as contributors it will be shared for everyone to be able to access i'll try and leave you with some actual takeaways and there will be time for you to ask me anything about retros. If you haven't yet seen, I'm just going to hide these collaborative cursors here. If you haven't yet seen, I have a website with now, I think there's 49, yes, there is 49 retrospective templates out there that I've made available completely for free. You can download them, you can access them in Miro or Mural if you prefer to do so. So I'll be creating my 50th one this week and sharing it. I've already got uh, a competition on LinkedIn to decide which it should be. But there's, there's so many freely available retro templates, uh, templates out there now that there really is no excuse not to just try it with, some, with your teams. And I've seen some people have already tried it. Apparently, it's working well. Now, why make engaging retros? Quite simply, to keep things fresh. We've just highlighted that it can become stale. Um, you know, people were nodding their heads when... I heard people when I asked the question, stop, you know, have you been in a retro where it was start, stop, continue, and sad, mad, glad, and the consequence was people disconnecting. By doing creative retros, it keeps things fresh. Uh, it can celebrate a microculture. This collection of people this evening all has lots of different interests, likes, dislikes, frustrations, ways of escaping reality. You'll, you'll watch movies and play video games and read books. And the team is exactly that, a group of people with their own little microculture. You might have a team that loves music and they 
they, they have a Spotify playlist together. You might have a team that loves video games and they play Among Us in the afternoons on a Friday just to adapt to unwind. Why not celebrate those and build the immersion and the, the fun into your ceremonies rather than making it a, an external to work thing? Uh, again, keeping things fresh uh, can promote engagement. So when we have a situation where someone's connected to the subject matter, they're likely to remain engaged. They're likely to contribute more. They're likely to feel part of it. And that can result in a much better outcome from a retrospective perspective. To provoke different thinking, here's a question for you folks. And you may, again, respond via chat, by speaking out loud. How many of you have been in a daily stand-up where someone asked the question, hey, what blockers or impediments you have? And it was just silence. I see hands raised. I see people, yeah, nodding. Now you ask that question in a very slightly different way. You, you ask and you say, rather than saying what blockers or impediments do you have, just share what help or support could I be given today? Or what would help me move forward with something? Essentially the same question. You reach, you're reaching the same outcome. You're finding something that could help the person move forwards. The problem is by, reflect, by framing it as an impediment or a blocker, it suggests someone is somehow not able to progress without any support. And it's kind of, a, there's almost an element of blame or not being good enough. So it can cause friction. You ask that question ever so slightly differently, people respond very differently. And the same comes to questions of retrospectives. Rather than asking what made you sad in the last iteration, ask it in a slightly different way and you can get a different outcome. And when, when, when I show you some of these uh, questions and some of these themes from, from the retrospectives I've created, you'll start to, to see. You know, if you, if you, for example, uh, do a, a queen themed retrospective, I created this one, and this is one of my favorite stories, by the way. I created this theme, um, this themed retrospective, and it's got, it's basically based on the queen discography. So you've got, we are the champions, and you play the music as people are silently reflecting. We are the champions. What, what do we want to celebrate from the last iteration? What kudos should we be giving? You know, I, I want to break free. What's holding us back? What's slowing us down? You're asking questions in slightly different ways. You're building an immersive theme into it. And the consequence of that, one of my favorite stories, someone came to me and said, hey, Chris, we ran your queen themed retrospective. We have this, this hard nosed program manager, never cracks a smile. He took, him, he took part in this retrospective. He admitted he loved queen. He smiled, he was engaged. That was one of my favorite stories anyone's ever told me about having used their retrospectives because it brought someone who was all very strict and work focused out of their shell of it a little bit, allowed them to be more of their whole self in the workplace and they were connected and it just resulted in a great outcome. And last of all, firm believer in this, work can be fun. Work can be fun if you allow it to be. A little bit of creativity, work can be enjoyable. And you know, there is research out there from, from Gallup from years ago saying that uh, people that are, that are engaged, okay, employees that are engaged are 21% more productive. I'm happy to find the, the links and the, the citations for that if anyone needs it. But for me, that is that is story enough. If you need some hard evidence as to why work should be fun, why you should enable engagement in the workplace, there it is. But honestly, it's, it's the smiles. It's the fact that um, people come to me looking forward to the next retrospective, wanting to be part of a retrospective. How often can you say that happens? People want to retro. Now, bringing your attention to here, this is just a snippet of some of the responses I've had since I started creating these retros. Right? And again, some people in, in this uh, session here have been involved in some of them as well. So, you know, we've got a, a Diwali themed retrospective. When in a world where retrospectives were primarily westernized content, you know, I created a Diwali themed one in the interest of diversion and, inclu and inclusion. And the consequence was a group of uh, Indian developers who were notoriously quiet in their meetings and their ceremonies. Well, like, what, what is this? This is interesting. This is great. You know, it celebrated their culture. They loved it. They were really reciprocal. I've done a, a Ramadan themed one for the, for the Muslims of the world. I've done a pride themed one. There's, there's lots of ways you can build in very important topics into retrospectives. And again, there's, there's so much feedback here. Star Wars theme went down a storm, added an extra element of fun. They were massive fans. Um, Home Alone, you know, we love this. It was great. We've been struggling with getting everyone in taking um, and being involved in retrospectives, but these this James Bond retro broke things down and you know, the, the usual talkers were getting stuck in. These are just some of the positive messages. So should you do it? Absolutely. Work can be fun. What, I've, what I have highlighted here, however, is there was there's, there's one in red. 
And I've highlighted that for a reason. It's one where it just wasn't for someone and that's okay as well. Sometimes people won't, they just won't be up for it. Now, there could be a number of reasons for that and always approach that with empathy, right? Don't, they don't, don't attack, don't make them feel disinclined. Perhaps have a conversation with them and try and understand why they may have felt disinclined to be involved. Some people are just, well, work is work. I don't want it to be forced fun. And that's how it can come across. Seek to understand what their experiences have been, why they may be disengaged with it. It might be they've had a bad experience in the past and, and it's left them with a bad taste in the mouth. And it might be actually just maybe the, the theme wasn't resonating with them and they might want to help create the next one. Who knows? But these theme retrospectives haven't always been for everyone. I'm not going to say they have a perfect 100% success ratio, but in my experience, the vast majority, 99% of the time, people enjoy them. They want to be part of it. They want more. So absolutely, I encourage you, I implore you to try it. Now, I mentioned I wanted to hear more about you folks. So with this Miro boards, if you haven't used Miro before, uh, ensure that the little blue cursor on your left-hand navigation panel is selected. When you can press V on your keyboard, it will achieve the same outcome. If you double left-click on any of these poster notes on the boards, you can interact with them. I'd love to hear from you. What's your favorite retro theme? Uh, what interesting team names have you worked with? And what do you personally geek out over? And again, if you prefer to interact via the Zoom chat, you can do so there, or you can speak out loud. Just share your thoughts. That is a massive post note someone's created. Oh, so someone's done a Valentine's Day speed dating one. I haven't seen that, I like it. Star Wars, Queen, Tacos, yeah, the Taco Tuesday one. That was a, a Mike Cohen challenge when he appeared on my podcast and I took that on with a plum. It's been a, it was a lot of fun. You actually have people building their perfect taco as an icebreaker. Sailboat, a classic. Letters to the future, yeah, building an element of a future spectrum to the equation. What about team names? So the fire starters, that sounds like a team that needs to use my prodigy retro. Uh, the bomb squad, uh, reshare, it's a, a neural link, it's a mirror link, I've just reshared it, sat. Team Grottoom, I don't know what that means or what that's about, but it sounds interesting. The Velocity Raptors, Marvel, nice. Okay, and what do you geek out over? Veggie gardening, meditation, The Sims, video games, yeah. Lots of things that people get excited about. You know, people love to escape reality. Why, why, is, why are books and TV shows and movies, million dollar industries, billion dollar industries? It's because we enjoy to escape reality and we enjoy having fun at work too. There's no reason we can't build these great things into themed meetings that people connect and enjoy. So the reason I've, I've asked some of these questions is one, to learn a bit more about you folks, but also just to emphasize what I was saying there about these microcultures. There is a random array of different things there. Paddle boarding, sports, books, films, growing chilies is something, something someone's passionate about. Fantasy football, ice skating. We are a collection of humans who like very different things. And there's no, you, I could probably sit down and build a retrospective template out of every single one of those things if I, took, if I put it to my mind. In fact, I'll probably add many of them to my backlog and create them. Now, time for us to work together and create a new retro theme. So I would like to hear your ideas, folks. On this board, there are many colored poster notes, yellow, orange, purple, doesn't matter which one you select. Just chuck some potential ideas that you'd love to create a new retro over. The one with the most votes, and we're gonna dot vote with something interesting, the one with the most votes, dot votes, is going to win and we'll collectively create it together. I'll give us just a, hmm, let's give us a two minutes to think of a theme whilst I go and find something interesting to dot vote with. All right, Olympics was the first thing I saw, so we are dot voting with Olympic rings. Again, this is one of my favorite things to do in a retrospective, by the way. You're seeing some of my live tips as we go along. Don't vote yet, I'm still building the uh, building them. 
but yeah, this is one of the things I do. I dot vote with a purpose. I dot vote with interesting things. Why, why not use interesting dots related to the theme of the meeting or the microculture your team loves rather than just using dots? It's infinitely more interesting. Uh, you have two votes each, folks. So grab those little Olympic rings and vote for any particular retro theme that you are most interested in creating together. So we've got wildlife, weather, 1980s cartoons, very specific, unicycles. We've got mountain climbing, time travel, video games, countries, tennis, weightlifting. I can get on board with that. Supercars, Vikings, Olympics, feels very topical right now. Music, I may have influenced that by putting the, the, the rings in, that's my bad. Sci-fi, currently in the lead, we have supercars, Olympics, and sci-fi. may not give you enough dot votes, let there's some more. In case anyone didn't get to put their votes in. Oh, it's still very, very close. Sci-fi taking over narrowly. Oh, supercars, it's gonna be close. I think supercars are taking it, eh? There's a lot of supercars fans in here. Yeah, that's it. Supercars, supercars, the retro it is. So here we go. Here is where I get you folks to help me build a retro together. Timer is up. So I'm just going to walk you all through the, the kind of sort of, sort of templates that I use. This is what you can see here is the, uh, the fairy tales retrospective. So this was created in the same way you have just done right there. We crowdsourced a the theme, we created a new retro together, the fairy tales retro. And you can see here, it's various things related to fairy tales. So the poisonous apple, Rapunzel, Princess and the Pea, you know? They are interesting metaphorical analogies you can apply to get teams thinking differently. Don't worry if you can move this around, it's just a template. Now, important things to draw your attention to. Uh, the right at the top, I never start any retro without sharing with everyone the retro prime directive which i'm aware sounds like it's something from star trek if anyone's not familiar with it it's uh norm kerth he created this a number of years ago and for me it is the perfect way to set the context for a retrospective particularly with a new team that may not be familiar with how to do so or even with a team where the psychological safety isn't quite built yet or maybe with the teams where they haven't retro in the past or there's a concern about blame and that sort of thing by by setting the context by reminding people why we're here Unconditional positive regard. We don't care what happens. It doesn't matter. It's not about blame. We truly believe everyone has done the best they can with the skills, resources, capabilities, you know, the situation they had at hand at the time. And that I find is absolutely key in building an environment where people are comfortable to share because they know it's not about blame. It's not about throwing a grenade at the fence and saying we couldn't do our part because they didn't do their part. It's not about that. It's purely about learning. We also see uh, I build in a section for actions and experiments, and I call them experiments for a reason. We don't know if the, the actions we pick up are going to work. They are purely experiments. They are three to five things from a retro that we could try differently in the next few weeks that we can then reflect on in the future and see if it worked for us. That's what we're looking for. We've got a bit of background noise, so if you aren't speaking, could you go on mute for a moment? And then you can see there's a lot of imagery. Again, it's all about building in the, the immersive theme. Uh, we've got ideas for the next retro format, again, to keep people engaged, crowdsource from them what they want to do the next retro one and build it with them if you like. And then there are anything between three and six, well, usually four and six actually, prompt questions that I use. Now, it's important to note, I don't expect every single of those questions to be completed in the time frame of the retro. I don't even care if they are all completed. What I tend to do is empower the team to choose one, get that person to nominate the next one, and I'll introduce the, the, the question, the, the prompt, and I'll invite silent reflection first. Important to note why I do this. So usually set kind of anything between two and five minutes for silent reflection, depending on the topic. And what this allows is the quieter voices to get their things down before a dominant one perhaps takes over or influences the the direction of the conversation or steers things perhaps towards their agenda. So this, this can bring out quieter voices. Uh, what I then do is after we've had that time, I then dot vote with a purpose, you know, with these interesting themes. So with this one, I might uh, be, if we were doing poisonous apple, I might use apples, I might use a little witch, I might use something themed from that, from that Disney film. Uh, get them to dot vote on the most important thing, 
what is the most important one that that team would like to do something about in the next few weeks? And then I encourage them to pull an action out of that, to create something that someone owns that they're going to do something differently about. Then we move on to the next topic. So it's not a matter of doing all of the topics, then getting to the actions. It's incrementally doing a topic, pulling actions out, moving on. And that can sometimes mean three of the topics are covered in, in, the, in the time frame. Um, but as long as actions are identified, that's what matters. You also notes that my retros tend to be 45 minutes, and there's a reason for that. I'm a fan of shortening them. It links back to the keeping them engaged. Uh, it links back to trying to keep people focused because it can be very easy to disconnect and, and switch off, particularly if we're looking at screens. So I, I tend to shorten the retros. So let's build one together. You should all be here. Let's think of an icebreaker relating to supercars. Chuck your ideas at me. You may type in the chat, you can speak out loud, you can create a post-it note on this board. How could we break the ice in a way that would introduce the theme of supercars? Any thoughts? So tell you. Yeah, chuck some post-it notes in, the, in, the, in that box if you'd like to do so. Fastest car you've driven, okay. Excuse me, I have a very needy cat that has noticed I have a closed door and she doesn't like it. One moment. This is Celeste. She's a, a fluffy Maine Coon who was basically neglected all day because I went to London, how dare I? Hello, Celeste. I don't see the RSVP. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's lots of ideas for uh, an icebreaker relating to cars or even supercars. We've got best and worst cars, top trumps, fastest car you've driven. What color car do you have? If you were a car, what would you be and why? Quite abstract. So yeah, I, what, what I tend to do with retros is I'm increasingly looking at different ways of asking questions. I'm, I'm a big believer in building time for personal interaction into any meeting or ceremony we have because we don't have those water cooler chats anymore. It's, it's easy to just get lost in the work, 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 meeting, meeting, meeting. So building in time for uh, getting to know one another as part of a, a meeting, in particular a retro, absolutely key. So sometimes I will do a retro icebreaker that's around share an image of something, maybe share an image of the car you most want to drive. Maybe it's build out of post-it notes uh, an image of Shrek because the theme is, is Shrek the retrospective. There's lots of ways of doing it and lots of ways that can get people up and talking. Um, yeah, so what, why, don't we, why don't we just choose, should we go for the dream car or what's the car you most want to drive, supercar you most want to drive? Sound like a good one? So this is supercar related? All right. Now, I just accidentally closed my tab there. Now, here's where we start to think of some prompt questions. And some of these actually, you could probably reuse some of these icebreaker things, you could probably be reused. So think of some car related, supercar related questions that we could use as prompts for, from a retro perspective. And again, you can contribute by, by sharing your thoughts. What we're looking to do is try and create four or five prompt questions that a team could use to uh, think differently about how things have gone in the past, how things could be in the future. Again, when I tend to build retrospectives, I'm trying to think, oh, I'm trying to cover a number of bases. I'm trying to always include some element of celebration. What's gone really well? What's What kudos we want to give? What, uh, what should we be celebrating about, about the past? Also, what's been frustrating us in some way? Uh, I always like to build in some element of future spectrum. So imagine yourself in two weeks in the future, what could be differently? Uh, I like to increasingly build in things like, how can we collaborate better? How can we focus more on mental health and things like that? So there's lots of ways of bringing different questions in. What gear are we currently in? Like it, it's a good question. 
Also, if you prefer to do so, uh, you may contribute to creating this retro by finding some nice images on Google of supercars and decorating our retro so it looks nice and thematic. So you may contribute by uh, sharing your thoughts on what questions and prompts you can you contribute by sharing supercar images. Let's build this together. Could you go faster? What would be servicing or a pit stop? Again, I like that because it reflects on, it's almost like what do we need to maintain about our ways of working? What gear are we currently in? Let's do this. What's wearing the tread on our tires? It's similar to the pit stop one. Ditches up ahead. Do, we, do, do supercars come across ditches? Is there like a, an evil wicked bend or something? Is there a famous turn in some sort of um, Grand Prix or something that we can we can reference here? The, the, what's misfiring? Okay, that's cool. Rowan Atkinson crashed his F1, uh, McLaren F1 into a ditch, didn't he? Did he? Yeah. How very Rowan. It wouldn't have happened if he was flash hard. That's all I'm saying. So we've got a supercar appearing there. What could give us a NOS boost? Oof. So yeah, we're building elements now. What would speed us up? What would help us move faster? Uh, we've got elements of what would slow us down? What would, uh, what would help us maintain our ways of working? What are the dangers on the track? The ditches up ahead. So we've got a couple of links around risks. What could we face? Out of interest, what is considered a supercar for the uninitiated, but not being a supercar enthusiast? There are lots of you who have found this template, so I'm guessing you're you're more of an enthusiast than I am. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's a definition, is it? It's a bit of a, a bit of an ambiguous term, isn't it? Probably, unless it's a criteria. Oh, it's shit fast, basically. <laughs> yeah, it's damn fast. All right. <laughs> We're fishing or drag. Whoa. Okay, so let's go with let's go with a few of these then. So, uh, what gear are we currently in? Let's get that. Are we going? So I'm thinking here. Yeah, what gear are we in? Are we going at sustainable pace? Do we need to shift up or shift down? I like about that is it's focusing on sustainability. Too often we get focused on velocity, velocity, velocity. It's not all about that. It's about sustainable pace. Uh, what needs servicing or a pit stop? What have you got stuck in a traffic jam? I guess it depends when you're driving your supercar. Uh, what dangers are on the track? That's definitely yeah, what, what dangers are on the track. What risks do we face as a team? Crash. Yeah, okay. So we've got two prompts already. Um, insurance, insurance policy for risks. Where should we be taking that insurance? Yeah, supercars absolutely need insurance. So, uh, modifications. Well, that's kind of like linking into experiments. What could we try? What modifications could we add? Let's get that in there. Just don't tell the insurance company, that's all. <laughs> One of the uh, early retrospective or themed retrospectives I used to ask, or we used to get people to do, was, was actually car related. I would ask people, if you were to describe your, your last iteration, your last sprint as a car, what would it be? And you'd hear a mixture of responses. You'd be like, oh, we were a Ferrari, we were a three-wheeled Morris Minor. We were, we were this, we were that. We were, um, someone someone once said they were a Ferrari, but just a shell, because once you open up the bonnet, you realize we have no engine, we weren't actually moving. We looked great from the outside, but really no substance within. Um, and then you ask, okay, so that's how you were. Imagine yourself in the future. If we were to tweak, alter our, our supercar to make it better, to perform better, to turn it into that dream car, that one everyone wants to get inside, what changes would we make? What, you know, what would that look like? What car would that be? And you, it's just a, again, a visualization exercise I quite like. 
and we did all that into there. So we got what modifications could we add as our, to our supercar? So our team is the supercar. What modifications could we add? What experiments can we try next? And uh, what could we improve? What can we tweak to improve our talk? There's just a, a ring to that. There we go. Nice. Let's try and find two more. Who feels strongly about another one of these? We've, we've got an element now of risk. We've got an element of, amount of uh, an element of experimentation. We've got an element of sustainability and pace. We need something about celebrating. We need something about celebrating success. Any of these? Is there enough on there that's reflecting on our the, the negative as aspects? We don't have a negative yet, really. So we've got risk, we've got sustainability, we've got experiments trying next. We need something about bad uh, and something ideally about celebration. So we have uh, two things I can see here. One of them says what collisions are coming our way. So I think that's that's probably quite related to the dangers on the track one, risks. Yeah. So we've probably yeah. got something about that. But maybe something around, um, I'm thinking this, this uh, servicing or a pit stop. Um, what's not going well? What do we need? To, where do we need to... Adjust things. Uh, or or tire to... changes? Could you yeah, could yeah, use tire a change. tire change metaphor? Tire change pit stop. So, what's uh, there was someone someone mentioned a reference to tread wearing film tires. It's wearing it down to the team uh, where. Trying to have different ways. So what's wearing our tread down as a team? Um, something car related. Let's do some, do some repairs. How's that? There we go. So one more, one more. I mean, something about celebrating, something to do with supercars. What what got us in pole position? There we go, right in the middle there. Okay, got us in pole position. Firing all, on us, all cylinders. All right, boom. We've now got five prompts. We've got lots of images. The one thing missing is uh, the ratio retro. You'll see at the bottom of the retro. I've, I've added these into the last maybe 15 or 20 retros I've been doing, I've been creating now. And the reason for this is I want to build in a feedback loop into the retros themselves. Is the retro adding value? Could it be better? The way it tends to work is that you ask the team at right at the end of the retro, out of five, how would you rate this? One, two, three, four, five. One, one being, you know, we had that the retro actually took place. Some team members maybe may have been missing, and we might have ident identified some improvement items, but the time box probably wasn't respected. All the way to five, where everyone contributed without any fear of judgment or uh, so psychological safety was present. We identified actions with owners. The time box was respected, uh, and we celebrated both success and uh, reflected on some challenges. So what I'd like to do is build in this Rachel Retro into the theme. So when it was uh, the Taco Taco Tuesday Retro, you'd rate with look, you'd rate it out of one out of five Taco Cats. When it was um, the Pride theme Retro, it was some sort of Pride Pride flag. Let's think of a a really cool supercar or something supercar related that we could use to rate out of five. Maybe it's like some sort of special tire. Maybe a oh, hypercars now, David. I didn't, didn't know that was a thing. Can anyone think of a really cool or an image that you particularly resonates for a supercar that we should use? Is it a brake horsepower symbol? Yeah. Search BHP symbol and it comes up with uh, stock market prices. Not ideal. Fuel level you could use, could you? Fuel, yeah. Um, what about a can of chuck, no. chuck some chuck some ideas on there? Images. Someone said cannon. Lap tire, like a checkered flag. How about that? Boom. 
there was there was Grand Prix but also supercar related. So you could just have one of these. Boom, boom. So out of five, checkered flag. So we could have a trophy as well. So basically, what we've done here in 15 or so minutes as a group is created a retro that's supercar related. And important to note, you might prefer some prompts to others. You might prefer to rate with, uh, yeah, speed dials. You might prefer to rate with trophies. I'm not saying that you have to use this retro exactly as it is. Customize it for your team's needs. This is the beauty of these retro templates. Once, once I've created this, or we've created this, and shared it, anyone can open it in their own mirror instance and do with it as they wish. Customize it, adjust it, take all of it or none of it. One of the great things. Now, conscious of time, we have built a retro together. I will tidy this up, make it available to everyone. Uh, I want to leave you, guys, you folks with some actual takeaways. Your notes, I keep saying guys by mistake. I'm trying to correct my language. I'm saying folks now. Uh, actual takeaways. So I alluded to some of this earlier. My retros are always, I'm aiming for 45 minutes to an hour. The reason for this is uh, research has suggested we don't focus for longer than 20 to 40 minutes anyway. So why have meetings that are going on and on and on? Uh, I personally, whenever I'm creating a meeting, I know I, I set my outlook default settings to 25 minutes and 50 minutes rather than 30 minutes in an hour. Uh, I encourage everyone to think of any meeting over 45 minutes as being a workshop rather than a meeting. There's no reason why we need to be in meetings back to back to back to back all the time. Same goes for retrospectives. You can achieve a lot in 45 minutes if you are approaching things in the right way, if you are setting the right context, if you're building fun in. And as long as you're getting the outcomes, which is actual improvements, that's the important thing. So give it a go, try shortening the retro. I would personally rather a 45 minute shorter retro that people were engaged and enjoyed than an hour and a half one where people were just feeling like they were staying there. And I, I guarantee the quality of the, the results towards the end is probably starting to, to wane anyway. Chris, can I ask you a question? You may. In a 45 minute retro, how, how deep can you go with individuals to try and understand the, say, say you wanted to, run a retro and then something came up in the retro that prompted you to use the five whys, for example, and you wanted to sort of try and get into the depth of that, that's not going to do it in 45 minutes, at least from, from the time that I would spend questioning that. So how do you manage those sorts of things? So I personally don't tend to have that option or that scenario come up very often. Uh, if it were to come up, I would be encouraging that to be probably a longer, deeper dive session that maybe doesn't require everyone to be there. If it did require everyone to be there, I'd have it as a separate focused session on that particular why or that particular challenge rather than it being part of that particular retro. These retros that I tend to do, they are uh, they're usually focused on time frames rather than deep specific issues. Uh, but there's no reason you can't use one to go into a deeper specific issue. And, and I think a five wise type is more yeah. uh, suited to that sort of scenario. And it, yeah, you wouldn't do that in 45 minutes, for example. Yeah, thank you. Back to my actual takeaways then. So again, you, you'll see in the templates uh, I use that I empower the team to select the next format. If they have been part of the, the solution, the, the what's coming next, again, they're likely to be more engaged. The consequence of this is I've had Age of Empires themed retros, uh, Deadpool themed retros, their Mario Kart, all sorts of things come up because people like to escape reality and they like being part of something. How often, uh, do you feel more connected to a potential solution or a way of doing something if you've been part of creating that? You know, if, if you've just been, if you had something thrust upon you, uh, it can be far less motivating. Create retros with your team. You can basically do what I've just done with you all with a the team. There's no reason you can't do it. You can't, you can sit down, spend 15 minutes doing so, creating something that they feel part of. You can extend the engagement thematically, um, you know, microculture focused beyond the retro. And some of the, the imagery I've shared here is you've got a little tiny Ant-Man and a massive Hulk. So someone mentioned Marvel earlier. There's a lot of people who love Marvel. You could quite easily have a team that loves Marvel. And rather than estimating story points as a 1, 3, 5, 8, or 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, et cetera, et cetera, they might say, well, our ones are an Ant-Man and our, our 13s are a Hulk or a, a Thanos because that language is what we like, and it just brings a bit of fun into it. You could have our ones being a Tyrion and, and a 13 being a mountain. You know, it depends on the theme. Uh, I, I forgot to quote the, the reason, uh, one of my favorite quotes when it comes to retrospectives, a little less conversation, a little more action. 
yeah, a retrospective is completely pointless if you're not finding actionable improvements out of them. You know, if you're not trying something new, if you're not tweaking something about how the team's working, odds are they might be frustrated about the same things in the future, the next time they do a retrospective. The other, the other quote I often refer to when it comes to retros is that taking no decision in when, when a team is aware of something that they're not particularly happy with is in itself a decision. If you don't do anything, you're discarding that. You are accepting your reality as it is, and you are aware that odds are you'll be facing that same situation in the future. So it's, it's not something that's out of their control. If they are choosing to do nothing, that is on them. And that's okay. If that's how they want to work, that's fine. If they're happy with that. But if they're not, odds are you have to try something. The definition of insanity as per Einstein is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. And this is what I encourage teams to avoid. Last of all, a little creativity goes such a long way. It creates great outcomes. It creates engaged people that are enjoying retros, that want to be part of them, that begin creating their own. I am very proud to say that since I started creating these retros, it's become a bit of a movement for it now. There's a cluster of people that are also sharing themed retrospectives, saying that I've inspired them. And that, that makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside, folks. It really does. Because it's demonstrating to me that more people want to do this. They're enjoying it. And, and that just, uh, I think it's, it's, it's beautiful. Now, Last of all, bringing your attention to here, if anyone hasn't yet seen, uh, there is a number of links here at your disposal. I think someone's already shared the link to my website, which has, yeah, 49 retros, will be 50 this week, all available, freely accessible, most of them in Mural as well as Miro. Uh, I have, uh, on my website is, is where I have a lot, is my blog and all sorts of things like that, my, my podcast with various, various people such as Lisa Atkins and Mike Cohen and others. Um, I, I tend to have a, a mixture of guests, both you know, from the thought leader side of the world, but also newer voices that I'm trying to amplify. And uh, that's where I share a lot of things on my YouTube channel as well. If you haven't connected with me, do so on LinkedIn. And I don't just do retrospectives. I also do agile games. I love agile games to teach concepts. Again, bringing fun into the workplace. It's great to teach people about the importance of technical debt through having them experience what it's like to be in a situation where there's technical debt. So, I run a meetup every, every month on Agile Gaming. You are welcome to join and come along. Right, uh, AMA, ask me anything. I can see there's already a question in here around actions and outcomes from previous retros without upsetting the new theme. If you aren't reflecting on actions from previous retro, then uh, how do you know if it's gone well? How do you know what to tweak? So it, it tends to be that I will begin a retro just by checking in with how the previous ones have gone. Um, from my perspective, when we've identified actions from a retro, the first thing that should happen is they go on the backlog. They go on the backlog, the, the product owner's prioritizing it alongside other potential things that team could be doing. Otherwise, we don't know what will happen. It'll go down the list, it'll be forgotten about, and then they'll go, oh, did we do that retro action? And it won't be present, it won't be transparent. So one way around this is just immediately getting it onto the backlog so it's physically there. Then when you're doing stand-ups and you're walking the board, you can see it being progressed. Um, if it's not on the boards, it could probably be forgotten about. Uh, there's, no, you, there's no reason you can't build, um, I guess, the previous retro actions and outcomes into the new theme. Um, you can certainly reflect on them and, and even remind, well, we did this, this queen, retro, queen retro last week and these are the actions and just build it in some way. Um, but it's, it's very important to think about those previous retroactions and not forget about them. Are there any other questions that anyone would like to ask me about anything retrospectives? Maybe just one thing, Chris, something you said, uh, which maybe was, was not intended, but let me just clarify. Yes. Once these retrospective items are injected into the backlog and treated like any other item in the backlog, you mentioned that the product owner would prioritize it. But my question is, why would the product want to prioritize those actions rather than the product items? So I, what, I, what I mean by that is that typically the product owner prioritize the backlog. Um, they should be prioritized alongside everything else that could be done. The reason for that is doing a retro action will take capacity away from the team, right? So it will distract them from all of the other things. And if the team is just going to be feature, feature, feature focused, um, odds are they won't have time, capacity, to build in these improvements. So what I don't want to happen is for them to be forgotten about, not involved. So those retro items should be considered in, in parity alongside other things. 
it's not necessarily that the team has to, the product owner themselves has to prioritize doing them uh, i just want them to be considered particularly if they're going to be particularly time intensive uh, again the reason i call them actions and experiments is i'm trying to get them to the, the team to think of think big start small learn fast so they don't have to be massive actions just what is a step in the right direction that moves you closer to your desired outcome and i think too often retro actions could be this big thing that ends up taking loads and loads of time but actually what we do want is just improvement movement in the right direction uh, people can let perfect be the enemy of good thank you uh, I believe, Loretta, the video of the session will be available. You are more than welcome to share it with anyone who would like to be involved, who would like to, to learn from it. Oh, mute your yeah. hand up. Yeah, uh, thanks, John. Um, just on, on the topic of prioritising some of the actions that came out. So if, if, a, if a PO was going to prioritise these things, assumably they're going to want to, well, they do want to know how much effort they're going to take. So would you usually uh, get, get in size, get them pointed? Is that normally what you would do, Chris? Again, again, context context is key. I think if, 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 they, if they're going onto the backlog, they should be considered alongside other things. Um, most, most of the time, I wouldn't say they're, they're, they're things that I, I would consider from a pointing perspective. Um, I'm increasingly looking at how teams can avoid story pointing and, and use uh, historical data uh, like and, and use kind of Monte Carlo simulations and forecasting rather than estimating because there's so much time that can end up being spent on estimating only for it to become irrelevant when they learn something new anyway. Um, but personally, the, the reason I'm saying prioritize alongside it one, one another is because I don't want them to be forgotten about. I want them to be transparent, visible, not ignored. Question from Neil. When starting with a new team, perhaps we've never done retros before, do you suggest a particular approach? And have I found theming helps or hinders? Uh, personally, I feel a, a new team is a perfect opportunity to use a theme retro. Rather than to allow them to become jaded or frustrated by boring retros, why not build that in early and set the expectation that they're going to be fun, exciting sessions? As long as you are providing the, the, I guess, the key context about why, why we're doing this session, what benefit and value it'll have, and building that into it, I see no reason why a themed retro wouldn't be a great way to start with a new team rather than a hindrance. And as for any particular approach, maybe just choose a relatively simple theme that's quite generic that could apply to the majority of people. So rather than going deeper into something that someone might not resonate with, such as John, Pokemon, maybe go with something that everyone's heard of or everyone's done before. So, I don't know, Taco Tuesday is usually quite a popular one because usually a lot of people like tacos and you get to build a taco together and it's all about food. Everyone loves food. Whereas if you go deep into a, a specific one, uh, Marvel, for example, maybe people don't watch, certain people don't watch TV shows or movies and they might not connect with it. So maybe choose something that's um, quite specific something that everyone can get on board with, like the Olympics, very thematic. Um, Pride was one I did recently. Uh, the, the Euro 2021, everyone was kind of watching that. You can, you can grab a theme that's very topical. Halloween, you know, there's, there's just lots of ones that just will apply to everyone. But equally, they can be a great way to, to as I said, build in inc inclusion and diversity. You could have a, a team um, that does the Diwali theme retro, and, and it could be the other way around. You may not know much about Diwali, but you get to learn about Diwali as a consequence. Uh, Monte Carlo simulation, much longer topic for, for, for discussion than today. Uh, essentially, it is a, a method of using data to extrapolate and forecast uh, based on you know, actual team's performance and to give confidence ranges in dates that could be hit. So the idea being that you run these simulations based on the, the throughput of the previous team's performance and then assuming they have X number of tickets in the future, this is when they will complete. Uh, the, the value in it is that it stops people spending hours and hours estimating, and you can just use uh, a quick, simple tool to pull some data out of JIRA, for example, if you're using JIRA, and get a few dates and give that back to stakeholders, because that's what they care about. They just want to know dates. There's almost this, um, there's almost two levels of forecasting. There's a forecasting or an estimating that a team does for the purpose of understanding the size of something so they can plan their, their workload and their capacity accordingly. Great. The problem is uh, those numbers can sometimes be 
being mistakenly used by stakeholders to say, oh, it's going to be ready on that day. And that's that's not what we want to do. Uh, there are Monte Carlo forecasting sounds like a topic for again for, for another day, but um, there is a Jira plugin called Actionable Agile, I think, uh, and there's various Excel spreadsheets out there that you can pull out of pull data out of Jira and plug into. Have a look out for those. Question for myself. Um, is there a, obviously many, many of us don't have these new teams that uh, Neil was going on about. Um, mm -hmm. Is there a sensible first step away from the mad, glad and sad into one of these teams without taking the full step into the unknown? Uh, where it's, I've had, I experienced exactly this. I thought, I thought, right, this is a team that's historically quite waterfall. Um, mm. it's, it's a very project and program world. I can't, I can't go straight in with something heavy. So I, I went with Queen mm. because, because, because everyone's heard of Queen, and you play the music as you go along. And it's, just, it's, um, it can be quite, quite a low key way of introducing that, and it also caters to. I hate to say it, it caters to a an elder demographic sometimes and typically the people that are more resistant can be from that demographic without trying to stereotype or otherwise um that in my experience has been a, a situation okay thank you james bond there's the one that's quite popular mm. um star wars and star trek you know there's, there's just lots of lots of them that are quite uh, uniformly appreciated harry potter yeah Any other burning questions from anyone? So I haven't done a Wimbledon one yet, Super Starter. Uh, that's on my backlog of ones to create. Whose who's, was that? Or did you create it? If you did, please share. Just a reflection, Chris, on how you did the voting during the session. So mm -hmm. I, I really like the way you, you themed, the, themed the dots. So although it's not as entertaining and engaging probably why would you ever use the Miro voting system because with that you, you can time it you can assign a specific number of votes you can make sure people are only using that number of votes is there, is there a reason why you don't do that albeit it's not quite as engaging as dots it might just, be sim to... just simply because it's not it's not as engaging when i've when i've used the built-in jira one yes there's a timer there's no reason you can't use uh, these creative dot votes plus a timer. You know, it may be an extra click or so, but that's not not too much for me as a facilitator. Uh, it's simply that it's it's more engaging, it's more fun. People can um, again. What I tend to do is allow people to choose the things they dot vote from themselves. Again, you build that that engagement level into it rather than it being something that I've put upon them. Uh, the the inbuilt Jira one for me has been a bit clunky in the past. You know, you've done a, a vote or a single thing. It takes time. Then you've got to wait for the results to queue up. It just to me, it just it disrupts the flow of what I'm trying to do. So I found using the, the different dot voting style has been infinitely pacier and, and maintains the flow rather than jumping back and forth from the inbuilt Jira one, uh, Miro one. Jira, I think it's a bit, I think the Miro one's a bit buggy as well because I've had it where I've been facilitating and I said, oh yeah, su such and such has got 15 votes, and they're like, no, it hasn't. It's got 17 votes, and they can see 17. Yeah, I'm sure there's bugs in there somewhere. Probably is. I am sharing a few links to for you folks. So there's a, a link in the chat for my, my website. I so said there's some 49 retro <laughs> themes on there. There is a link to my YouTube channel if you would like to follow that. And also a link to my, my LinkedIn. I am the virtual agile coach. Other than that, if there are no other questions, I'm, I'm happy to stick around and, and listen to more. Um, it's been a pleasure to engage with you. Thank you for creating a retrospective template with me. It's been great to speak at Agile Northampton.